Well, hello there. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the studio. You know you're tuned directly into the Hidden Entrepreneur Show. I am your host, Josh Carey. My guest today is a woman really after my own heart. You may know that I spent 15 years in New York City living the dream as a professional actor and filmmaker. My guest is Lori Burton, and she knows a thing or two also about this, having herself spent 30 years working in film, television, and theater. She served on the faculty at the University of Southern California, USC, of course, the School of Cinema Television, teaching filmmakers and directors in both graduate and undergraduate programs how to develop their communication skills for great impact and effectiveness. I'd like to get in on some of that learning. Today, as the founder of Lori Burton Training, she teaches Fortune 500 companies and entrepreneurs alike the art of communication. She's also the author of the book, Presenting You. Use skills from the actor's playbook to master the art of communication. I cannot wait to dig into this dialogue. It's a pleasure to welcome you. It's Lori Burton. Hello. How are you, Lori? I'm fine. It's good to talk to you. This, is good. this will be fun. I, I agree. Who doesn't like a little fun mixed in with their learning? I'm all for that. Yes, yes. So one of the things you teach is how to cause people to feel something, to have an experience. Why is that goal important? Because it, when you're causing people to feel something and to have an experience, you, you're, pulling, you're making contact. You're, you're getting on, getting to know them. They're getting to know you through the words you say and how you say them and how you interact. It's really putting your personality out there. It's making contact with them through your animation and your, the words and the enthusiasm we, and energy. Most of all, energy. We gotta, that energy leads us into the conversation at any time, any place. Let Let's set the stage, pun intended. Uh, mm -hmm. you've, you've spent um, decades in the biz, as they say. Um, set the stage for us. Give us some, uh, some credits just so we know your history. What kinds of things have you done? What were some of your awesome <laughs> roles? <laughs> I started in a, it wasn't too awesome, but it was in a movie with Elvis. And uh, I had a, a few lines to say along with the other maybe other 10 women that were around him all the time. That was fun. It was, it was you know, were bodies around Elvis. And that's where I started. And um, then I got into a lot of commercials, great commercials. And TV, um, things like, um, oh gosh. Um, oh, what's the name of that show? Um, I can't think of. Now I'm going blank on my shows. I love that. I did, a, I did a, a soap opera called Rituals. We were on for about two or three years and we got canceled. That was the most fun because every day you get to go in and spill your blood. You get to, it's very dramatic, you know, and you, and you really got to know your craft though. Come up with those moments when it's big tears or pain or suffering. Oh, a lot of suffering. But that was really fun. I saw the video clip on your website and I paused it because as I'm watching, I see the clip of you delivering some lines and standing next to you, I said, is that Elvis? <laughs> and, and I paused it and I was like, that's either Elvis or an Elvis lookalike. I don't know. I'm going to go with Elvis. And, and lo and behold, yes. It was Elvis. People love to hear that. It's like, it happened so long ago, but everybody knows Elvis, you know, even the young people today. But there I was, I was sitting next to him and he was holding me, but he was really coming on to the, the lead in the film. The how, other... how old were you at that point in time? I think I was 19. So what was it like as a 19 year old, literally standing shoulder to shoulder on that Hollywood set next to Elvis? Did you understand the magnitude of that? I did, but I was just doing my job. You get to the point where you're an actor, that's your job, and you really have to fulfill the, the moment. And uh, so it was, it was fun because it was Elvis and we were dancing and having lots of fun, but it was still a job and uh, it was a great time. It was really, 
he would he wasn't around for very long you know he he would hit do his stuff and then he'd disappear with his um nashville uh group guys mm. all guys like 10 guys that took care of him let's segue into how all of this relates to business people uh, and entrepreneurs of all of all kinds, because that's what you do today. So you've you've said that we all act every day. All business people have a role to play, and the key to success lies in their performance. Tell me about that. Every, I say life is a performance. Most of the time, when I, when I met with a when I first started with a corporation, the president, he said, I said, this is really kind of based in acting techniques, some of the things I do. And he said, oh, we don't act here. I said, you act every day. You act when you answer the phone. You say, yeah, hi, how are you? And the person says, how are you doing? And you say, oh, I'm great. I'm just great. And you feel awful. But you have to say, I'm great. That's acting. That's acting right there. The minute you walk in and say, good morning, everybody. You may have just gotten off a terrible ride on the freeway, but you've got to say, welcome everybody as if nothing, everything is going smoothly. So you, you're acting all the time. And I love one of your quotes. You say, life is a performance and you just got the lead. And I guess, is that a typical roadblock uh, in your training mission today where people say, nope, 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 not for us. We're not actors. Mm -mm, that is. And it's mainly because their stage, they know they're going to have to stand up in front of somebody and present something. And, you know, that 75% of the population just dreads that. So it's really meeting that demon inside that says, oh, no, I can't do that. I don't want to do that. And saying, I'm going to take this on. I want people to know me more, to be able to see my personality. And especially when you're presenting, you got to be animated, as you know. You did it quite well in your intro. Yeah, the words you say have got to be animated, and the meaning uh, is mentioned. You're mentioning, I feel great. And you can't say, I feel great. I feel great. Great. You can say it in all different kinds of colors. You know that, right? And people just don't have the, they don't, no, one, number one, don't want to do it. And number two, they don't know how to do it. But it's really simple to learn those acting techniques. So when you're brought in to a company or working with an entrepreneur directly and you're brought in to help and deliver these techniques, what are some of the biggest obstacles that you're overcoming? Oh, boy. You know, you have somebody get up in front of the group and we, we videotape everybody because that's the best feedback in the world they go oh my god that's me yes that's you or yes that's you look at this the biggest thing to overcome is your body what tension does to your body it can paralyze you and your brain's feeding at the one end your body's feeding at the other and it becomes a paralysis so you need to know how to deal with tension and to know how to express your body and to where it lives where the tension lives in your body how to overcome it and to feel comfortable. So we have all kinds of exercises to have people experience the different levels of tension and working through it and what things you can do to work through it. And what is the outcome that you're trying to instill through all of this? A total, a connection, a comfort level and a connection with your words and your body and your mind and sending it out there and not caring, being comfortable and confident in your, in your own being and being on the spot, taking your due. That's what I call it, taking your due. You're up there and you're owning who you are and what you have to offer. But people always say, oh no, pride is a sin. No, 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 no. You have to be prideful of who you are and sell it to the world. And know anytime, any place you can do that. You talk about, in this vein, you talk about a personality workout. Do people <laughs> feel like, oh, no, 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 I, this isn't me, I can't change, and, and where's, that, where's that issue? That issue comes up instantly when they put them on the spot. They don't, really don't want to go there. You know, they, they're sitting in their chairs before they they're come on camera, and they're just being themselves and having fun. And then when you get up in the middle of the, on camera, everything, your personality disappears. 
because the tension zaps you and the personality disappears. You've experienced that yourself, haven't you, under pressure? <laughs> of course. So how do, we, how do we get through that? What is the, what is the outcome there? How do we you got get it. We, You got to really get in touch with, and there are exercises to, you, it's a personal inventory. How do I feel? I'm standing here. I'm nervous. Where's the tension? And you say hello to that tension. You got to make friends with the tension. If you don't make friends, it's in charge. If you don't say, oh my God, my legs are shaking. Oh, okay, I got it. You're there. I feel it shaking. Okay, I'm taking a deep breath. The deep breath, and everybody talks about it. It's key. Once you take that deep breath, it starts it, that starts the process. But that tension, that's the key because it robs us of everything. Faces go blank, bodies do stand in a fig leaf position. You know how that one is? Yes. And or a reverse where your hands are behind your back and the other with your hands right in front of your important parts. When we talk about the art of communication, I, I love that phrase. What, is that, what does that really mean? What is that end result to be a good communicator? It's a wow. They love you. You've made the sale. They're giving you their, their, their business. Or you've made, you, you're out there get, looking for a job. And they say, okay, we'd like to hire you. That's the ultimate because you've got this package and it's selling. It's really doing a great job. And you're making contact with these people in any, any area. You can be out on a date. You'd better have that, that personality and selling yourself. That's boy, that's really a test, right? So <laughs> is this about, I was going to ask, can somebody really change their personality? But is this about changing a personality or is it using what's already under the layers? It's what's using what's under the layers. You're right. Good, good one. Yes. And you're adding skills on top of it. You're building more layers so that you can, you can draw on any of those things when you need to. Yeah, you're not, I don't want to change anybody's personality. I just want to add to it. So you're sort of bringing out the best that is already there that's been covered up. Yes, yes. What is it covered up with? Oh, insecurity, lack of confidence, um, not knowing how to gesture and not knowing what your body looks and feels like. You need to know how you come off. Yeah. I just thought of the two things, Remington Steel and Dynasty. And the ones I couldn't remember before. Your credits. I love it. TV credits. I remember, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Great credits. Yes. Yes. Um, and I, more, I'll, Our House. There's another one. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Where were we? <laughs> we were talking about the layers that people yes. put on. And, and what are some of those layers and why are they there? The, one, the negative ones or the positive ones? The, yeah, the negative ones. Yeah. yeah they are very stern face. They don't animate their face. So that you're not getting the message. The message turns people off rather than brings them in. And they walk around a lot or they pace or they just stand there and not do, their body's not expressing and their face isn't expressing. That's, boy, that's mm. key. And there's no energy. I can't, I can't tell you and express enough concern about energy. It's the key that draws people in. Well, that's let's- That's the thing they see. Yeah, let's talk about that. What is that? Huh? How uh, if 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 somebody's in an office environment and they're going about their day, or they're the entrepreneur going about their business, how do they how do they bring the energy? You got to work on it. Some people's energy is just low key. It's like their their glass is half full all the time. No, half empty, and they need to start pouring in some positive. Uh, liquid in there, but it, you really have to work on it. If you're a laid back person, you don't like expressing or talking that much, you have to put yourself out there. So if you, you come into work in the, in the morning, you never say hi, you got to start saying hi and animating your face and your cheeks. It's like these cheeks have to go up. Hi, they have, even if it's, if it feels fake and awful, you got to start somewhere because then you'll, it'll start making its way in. And, but you really have to work hard on these things. It's not yeah. just, you know, here, magic dust and, and you're going to be just fine. No, you got to work on it. 
Yeah, how do you feel about that? Do most people resist that responsibility of working hard on something? Yeah, they do. Yes, they do resist a lot because they don't want to. People, when you're in front of people, they're judging you. They're, they don't want to face that judgment. And I've come to, through so many years, I don't care what they're thinking. Well, they're gonna, some people are going to like me, some people aren't. That's, that's the way it goes, folks, really. So it's acceptance of that and being judged. Okay, fine. Mm. Yeah. Let's go back to your start as a human being, really. Take us <laughs> back to Lori Burton as a young child. What was that like? How did you grow up? I grew, I grew up with a mother who was in show business, who I saw at the Hollywood Bowl, singing at the Hollywood Bowl. Uh, she was with a band at the time, and uh, my father was at the NBC Orchestra playing the violin. So I come through a background of uh, showbiz folks, and growing up in, I was born in Hollywood, for goodness sakes. Mm. And, and then I grew up in, uh, I grew up in Malibu, uh, we, my mother married a, a band leader and we had a lovely uh, beach house in Malibu. And uh, that was so terrible. <laughs> yeah, junior high school, high school, coming home to Malibu and, you know, surfing. And it was wonderful. Uh, yes, we even well, asked. Yeah, well, um, on the surface, I could imagine it all, it all does sound ideal and wonderful. And, and did home life and personal life and parent-child relationship and atmosphere and vibe support it? Was that also as wonderful? No, it wasn't that as wonderful. My mother got divorced uh, two times from my father. I was never that close to my father until right before his death. Um, he was married five times <laughs> and, and his the last wife died. And then he turned to me finally in those last years. But it, it's kind of sad because you have you you come up needing um, approval from men, you know, and so that that's that was a downfall a few times. But I've lived through that and come out the other side. But no, I, my mom was very close to my mom, but not my my stepfather or my parent, my father. So and no siblings. Oh wow, you're an only child. Yes, yes. So it was kind of lonely at times. Yeah. Was it expected that you were to go into show business or that was just the unspoken norm and that's where you naturally went? No, not at all. But it was always, oh, Laurie's so talented. Watch her do this and that. And it was kind of pushed a little. At but I had, the, I had the want. I had the need. So I always was, I was singing. I started as a singer and then turned to acting too. I love, you know, I love acting. My singing career was not that great. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> I was young and didn't have the soul. So that went down. But the acting, I had the acting. Yeah. I, I get it. Um, early on in my career, um, I went down the musical theater path and took oh. acting, singing, and dancing. And I'll <laughs> say that I wasn't quite good at two of those things. <laughs> you, yes. you get it, you know, I and then did, you just I find did. your way. Yes. I, I, I was actually in the musical, our big musical at my college. I, they didn't even know I was around until I went to audition and they cast me in the lead, but that was really fun. Um, yeah. yeah. I love singing and dancing. Love it. Mm, uh, yeah. I mean, I do too it, behind closed doors and I love the art. <laughs> I love Broadway. I love it all. Um, oh. I, I want to hear a bit more. You said that your, your father was, was married five times. You, you weren't close until the end. Tell, yeah. me, tell me what that transition to a close relationship was like. How did that really develop in those final moments? Um, he re well, he called me, you know, he, he was really interested in seeing me more and asking me, he lived in Palm Desert and I would go down there and see him and, and we would talk and we made this, I spent a couple nights with him and we made this bridge between us. We were able to find a, and he would speak Yiddish to me and I would just love that. It, it, there was a family feeling to that, you know, and he would joke around and play the violin for me. And so we made this lovely connection at the end that was important for me and, and for him too. And my, I took care of him a little. He was, um, uh, didn't know much about cooking and, and having his wife pass away. So he was really on his own, but it, it felt like I'd, I'd, I'd cut through some 
depressed, depressing moments for me, not having him around, you know? So it felt good to be able to just get a little a hit of him and make a connection with that, that Jewish part of us. Hmm. So you were raised, you said, by a stepfather and your mother? Yeah, yeah, about 10 years of it, yeah. And um, they had a place in the valley, and I had a little cottage of my own, which was not great, because I really was on my own at an early age, at 11. I was in a, they were in the main house, and yeah, there wasn't room for me in the main house. No, my mother came to regret this whole thing, but um it eventually worked out because she said, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm moving to Malibu. I have to have a home for her. So that's, that worked out. But Is she was, still around? No, no. She passed like 19 years ago. So you said she came to regret that. When did that conversation happen? Oh, that happened, um, oh, when I was about uh, maybe 20. We, got, we had a very serious talk. No, that was when she moved. She never really talked talk to me about it. She just made the move to give me a home. And later on, I sat down and just said, you know, I was pretty lonely for a long time. And she regretted that and, and expressed how sad she'd been over it and how the, she paid more attention to the wet to the marriage and to her relationship with me at the time. And she was traveling with him a lot. So, you know, she did, we did have that talk. It was a very good talk. And so um, th that felt good. And I was able to tell her how disappointed I had been and the not realizing how talented I was, not just expressing myself as an actor or as a singer, but the mind, what my mind and how I felt about things. She always emphasized the layer outside, be beautiful, be pretty, be talented. But rather than saying, you know, Lori, you're so precious and your way you think and the way you interact with people is so wonderful you have such a, a way about you it's that moves me yeah so that i've carried on through my life and you know now hmm. i'm a different, different person different person now than i was 25 years ago for sure <sighs> at, at 11 you said you were living on the outside, which was an extraordinarily beautiful home and location in Malibu. And you were almost sequestered to a side cottage. No, this was in the valley. This was in the valley when I was left. There was like a big complex of, of uh, cottages and they were in the main house, my mother and my stepfather. And she had me in a cottage by myself. I, at that time thought, oh, this is great but later found, realized what it really did to me. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that even at that age, you, you embraced the positive and said, oh, this is so great. Uh, and then you said that you were looking for the approval of men and others mm -hmm. afterwards. Tell me about those times. Um, well, it showed up in my husband choices, <laughs> you know, and um, after two marriages, um, you, you make the wrong choices. You're somehow looking for your father or just the, the way they feel about you. Or, it was all wrong. And, and I was not in touch enough with myself at that point to realize what I was doing. So uh, after the second marriage, I was alone and on my own. And that was with my daughter. That was good. That made the woman and then finding my third husband at the uh, proper time, the good time. So we went on the freeway. <laughs> so we was driving 65 miles an hour and we met on the freeway. Uh, yeah, I'm, I want to get to all that. Um, <laughs> I, so, so back to your teenage years for a minute. So you had a, um, a relatively normal high school years, yes, normal we, within the, yeah. We, we moved to Malibu, and I, those were junior high and high school, very normal, in taking the bus into Santa Monica High School. There was no Malibu High School then. And so and we would come home, and we'd go swimming in the ocean, and we'd go surfing. And it was, it was I, idyllic. You know, it was just uh, every night you go to sleep with the waves pounding. And in, in my room at that time, when I was like 14, Elvis Presley was all over my room. Oh, foreshadowing, I see. Yes, yes. And it was just terrific. I, it was perfect. And then I went on to college from there. 
And that was a heck of a fun experience. What college? It was um, Stevens College in Columbia, Missouri. So it was right next to the University of Missouri. Why did you move uh, inward? I wanted to get, I wanted to find, feel what the middle of the country was like. And boy, it was a great experience. So Tell me. Great experience. I mean, they, all the girls from California were on the same bus together. And they all, we all got off of the bus uh, on the same day. And the guys were lined up from the university because the California girls were coming. Because we, we were pretty cool. It was right near, right at the, at the same time as the Beach Boys and all, God, all great, great mm. California uh, uh, musicians, you know, making it. So that was cool. What were you planning on studying? Drama and communications. Yeah. So you knew that, hey, after four years, I'll, I'll head back west and begin my career? Yeah, it was two years there. It was an associate uh, degree. So then I did come back and I went to work as the secretary at Paramount. Meaning what? What was the uh, job? The job was as a secretary, which was pretty funny because I wasn't very good, but I got through and that led as a, at the, you know, as a secretary doing my job to this producer. And then that led to my first job, uh, getting my first agent because everybody used to come in and visit everybody at, on the lot, you know? And so uh, his name was Jack Gilardi, really cool agent. And uh, he got me the job, the Elvis Presley thing and more after that. So that was your first professional gig? Yeah, yeah, and yes. Wow. And then, then there was another movie, uh, uh, Beach Bingo Blanket kind of movie. Um, some, I can't remember the name. Yeah, I can't remember the name, but it was people dancing on the beach. And Bobby Darren, no, James Darren, I think, starred in it with, I've forgotten the other people. But that was fun, too. So you're, you're now officially a working professional actor with an Elvis credit to your right. name. and. Yeah. And then, and then are, you, are, are you just in that world now? Yeah, yeah. And to going out on interviews all the time, lots of disappointment, lots of, it's such a tough business. And a lot of those, go in your bathing suit and stand there and let them, you know, a piece of meat interview. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I did that too. That's hmm. not, fun. that wasn't fun. But no, I'm sure they're still doing that to some degree nowadays. May take a different form, but yes, we the casting couch, the whole thing. So, so I know you're 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 now living that lifestyle. You're you're in Hollywood. You're living there on your own. Um, yes, yeah, I was living on my own for a while with my mom, and then I uh, uh, met my first husband uh, when I was 24. Four. Yeah. And we, uh, we were living together and before we were married. So I would go out and interviews from, we got an apartment. What was his career? His, he was a, a musician and he did lots of, did lots of, uh, uh, music, um, arrangements for me. And I went on the road for a little bit and did some shows, but gee, I wasn't that great. I really, was. It, I didn't have the soul. I didn't have it at the, in those days. So, um, I, I really turned to acting because I had done it before and I really loved it. But I became a method actor. Tell us so what I, that is. Method acting is taking your own personal experience uh, of life. Like say I was doing a scene in a TV show where I was sitting and my mother was dying. Then I would go back if I, I've, I've experienced that. So I would call on that moment and recreate my mother's face in relation to the actor I was working with and, and also draw on those moments, how I was feeling when my mother would cry or when she would feel bad or when she was going through agony or when she was really in a coma. What, what, where did it live inside of me? What did I feel? What did I feel? What, what, where did it live? And what, what kind of um, f recreating that moment when your mother dies the, there's a there's a whole emotional response to that that has lived in my body that I can draw upon and use and use in all kinds of different situations. 
Um, I can recreate, uh, if I'm getting married in a movie, I can create that moment when I married my husband and how I felt and the joy and the, and the tears that were there. So it's a calling on and reliving and using your senses to achieve all of this, these moments. It's based in sensory work. What was quote unquote wrong with your first marriage? Where was the issue? He was a crazy man. He was a crazy man. He was just a really high strung guy that would drive anybody crazy. And he, I lost lots of weight. It was too much, too much. He's a one, we stayed friends until his death last year, but we were much better friends that we were married. He was, he was as a musician and arranger, he was just high strung, crazy Italian, wonderful guy. But, and I loved him forever and his mother and the whole, my daughter made a movie about he, him and his mother. My first husband, she loved him. My daughter's a documentarian. And uh, she made her own uh, documentary about him. Called so that's Ju- her father? That, no, that's my, fa- my first husband. Her father is my second husband. Okay, go ahead. And, and the yeah. documentary is called? Junior. And it's really funny. It's very, these two, uh, that goes through his life, his, what he does. But his relationship to his mother is hysterical. And they have moments in there that are so wonderful. So it's just a great, she wanted the um, new New York, uh, let's see, uh, a documentary, a documentary award uh, at the, um, I've forgotten which uh, mm-hmm. film fest. So she got lots of awards for that. It's amazing. Yes. They, I, I, I mean, I could totally relate to the whole actor lifestyle. And I know that even the stereotype is that there's, there's a lot of angst and depression that we're hiding and covering up and trying to find an outlet for. You find that to be the case? Not anymore. No, no. But originally. Originally. There's, and it's, it's, why do we act? Because we want to be seen. We want to be seen and we want to express ourselves. So, I mean, that's key. We really want to bring that out there and have it's being in front of a group is just fun entertaining them love it saying those words acting those scenes i love it so now you're in your your mid-20s you're married it's tumultuous you get divorced then what happens in your life i fall in love I go on a, a cool commercial commercial i was cast doing a smoking commercial with cool cigarettes and I fall madly before the cinematographer. <laughs> and so we started up and then we got married and Jenna, my daughter, is the result of that, that uh, uh, twosome coupling. But, uh, that, you know, he's a cinematographer. It's very much like being an actor with your ups and downs and going on meeting people. So, uh, but he was a really talented guy. He did some lovely work. Lovely work. I love the um, a cool commercial cigarettes. You remember when those were on the yes, air, and and yes, and and you yes. were part of that era. Yes. Oh my God, there, there I was smoking a cigarette. Oh my goodness, on camera, yes, and saying something, you know. And we were in Carmel, so the Carmel was the background. Cool cigarettes. Oh yes. And and where did that relationship derail? His drinking, drinking and uh, drugs. Yeah, that just was it, was, it was off track for a number of years. And I was just, I was, I, was, I was ready to just get out of it. But I had a daughter and I didn't know what to do. And I was lost and I had my, my career was at that point not doing too well. And I had a dry, wanted to do something, but I didn't know what it was. Didn't know what it was. So what happened? You're, you're lost. How, how were those those nights bad really unhappy very unhappy times and and um i had a an experience with uh, that brought me out of it uh do you want me to tell you about that yeah please i'd love it i was i was watching television one night and there was a, a documentary about whaling how we killed whales and used their blubber and all these and just for meat or whatever and they showed these wet mother whales protecting their babies, trying to protect their babies. I was, I was so emotional. I was 
crying hysterically. And I decided I was going to protect these whales, and I went on a whale expedition. And we were in the uh, place called San Ignacio Lagoon, and they take you out in zodiacs. And we're out there one day, and this is where the whale, the gray whales, come to have their babies and to mate. And so we're out there, and this whale comes up out of the water right in front of the boat. And so close that I could touch him. And the guy in the boat said, give me that camera lady and touch the whale. And I ran my hands down the face of this 50 foot whale. And as I ran my hands, it shuddered. It felt my touch. And I, I felt it was very cold, but cool. And I felt it shake. And I fell back into the boat and I was just grinning from ear to ear, just laughing, filled with joy. It was like touching God. It was just, it was the most um, ritual kind of holy thing I'd ever experienced. It was like a third encounter or a second encounter. I, it changed my life. I didn't stop laughing for 24 hours, and I was determined after, if that whale came to give me a message, I got it. And I went home, and I got a divorce, and I started my business. Wow. What, what business came of that? Uh, Lori Burton Training. Tell me, tell me the nature of it. What'd you put? I, so I, I, I was with my girlfriend at a a women in film meeting at Christmas. And my my girlfriend, Meredith, I had told her, Meredith McRae, who has passed, who is deceased. And she said, she knew I wanted to train people to go on camera. Because I'd I'd seen somebody do this on television, that they were training doctors and lawyers to be on camera. And I thought, what does she know about that? A psychologist, I know what it's like to have that camera at you and be filled with tension. So she said, okay, she came over to me during the party and she's, all right, I got your, I've got your first client. So she walked me over to a doctor and she told him all about me and he hired me. And that was the start. And he was, uh, he, he was, went on camera and he was much better. He talked to people, uh, whatever show he went on. That was the beginning of Lori Burton training. And how did your time at the acclaimed USC come about? Not too shabby. No, it came along at the same time. My ex-acting teacher said, I'm leaving USC. How would you like to take over my job here? And so I went and it was before we were, before we were full um, um, academically uh, um, accepted as a full school, I guess. But anyway, I didn't have to go through all the other th- things that people five years later had to go through. And they, and they signed me on. And so I did a class in acting for film and how to direct actors, hmm. young directors, how to work with actors. They don't know. They don't know anything about actors and what we do and how we work. That was a great class. Great class. Going back to this second marriage where you went out on the whale expedition, had that moment with (laughs) the whale that changed the trajectory of everything in your life. You said that 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 relationship was filled with um, drugs and alcohol on on his end. What were the day-to-day moments like? It's not fun to watch your your spouse have a few drinks and then a few drinks more and watches his personality change. You know, it's not, it's not fun. Um, and it wears you, it wears your, it wears you down that you can't have, and you know what you're looking, you're starting to feel that you need more. My personality, it was totally changing. I got into, uh, um, yoga and, meditation and uh, Native American life and tradition and ritual. So I was going off one way and he was going off the other. And that wasn't a good fit. Not good. How did your daughter make sense of all this in the moment? Well, you know, she was young then. She was like 10. So she was just watching and she was, it came out in her personality. We had to give her some with a psychologist and worked with her because she was sad. She was taking it, uh, not really hard, but it was showing up in some of her habits and things that was happening. I know that we are, as human beings, we're attracted for one reason or another to certain things. You, in those moments, were attracted to two of these men. What was that cause? 
Well, the attraction for my second husband was he was a cameraman and he was successful and, and, and had a great personality. And um, it just felt like, oh, this will be good. He was a few years older than me. And I thought, well, you know, I feel taken care of when I'm with him. And so it kind of was kind of meeting that fatherly to some degree um, that I had never had before feedback it was a you know he was it turned out though he wasn't like that at all i was more i was fathering myself more than he was fathering me yeah and then you you mentioned that there came to be a third husband tell us <laughs> well i'm just going along as a single person and i re uh, previously broken up with somebody and i was on my birthday i was driving on the freeway and this person comes up next to me and this is 65 miles an hour and he he says roll down your window he you know in those days we were rolling down our window so he says how do you like your sunroof and i looked at him i said oh it's wonderful in those days it was a sunroof as you're zipping down you're now, driving we're driving and then i looked at him and he was really cute really really hot and he looked at me and then he said, uh, and then he, he was driving along and he puts his, and he comes up alongside me again. He puts his hand in his shirt and he does like a heart palpitation, like, like, oh my God, my heart. And I thought, oh, is that corny? But I just, we kept driving. And then he said um, to me, oh, he watched me get off the same, going the same freeway as he was going. And then he came up in and he said, how would you like to have a, a drink? And I said, this is on the freeway again. I said, let's get off the freeway before we kill each other. So we got off the freeway and I'm getting off the freeway. And I'm thinking my mother would kill me if she knew what I was doing right now, <laughs> because you know, it could be a, a killer of some kind. So we get off and I, he parks behind me and I watch him get out of his car and he, he keeps getting out of his car and he keeps getting out of his car and he's really tall and good looking and young and had a hairy chest and dark hair. And I was, Oh yeah. <laughs> so he comes over, we talk, and he says, well, can you have some coffee or what? I said, it's my birthday. I'm going home to my daughter. We met a couple of days later, and that was that was 35 years ago. That was 35 years ago. And, and How and can after, you argue? Yeah. And after six, we broke up for four. After we, six years, you broke up for four, after years. four years. Then we got back on for another six, and then we finally got married after that. We've been married, married for 19 years. What does he do? We work together on our training, in our, uh, our Lori Burton training. Is he a performer? No, 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 thank God, no actor. No, 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 no actors, please, and you know why I say that. <laughs> so yeah. now, at, at, wow, 35 years ago, you were, was that when you were on the road to a, to a more healthy lifestyle emotionally and spiritually? What are some of the things that changed for you? that just my connection to most of all my connection to the earth i'm grounded in the earth i love the earth it feeds everything i do and it also is it's an inspiration for um so much in my life i go out there and i i work with plants and i work with i walk i hike all the time because i get great thoughts when i'm out there with the mother nature and i can work through a um a, a session or an idea for a for a um uh, an exercise or something but my connection with the earth is all important what are some of the specifics that if i want a connection with the earth where do i go with that you go out into nature you go and hike and you touch and you and you look at the leaves and you and you watch the what the sun is doing this where is the sun in the sky and what's the sun in the how is it affecting the trees and is there backlight or is it front or is it flat or what what plants are you drawn to what do you which plant do you love and is there water involved i have to have water my hope is to someday buy a a, a cottage on a river in washington yeah, that's where I want to be. Hmm. Rivers and water and, or creeks. I have built a creek in my backyard, a little creek in a Japanese garden because it's, I have to have that. You can hear sound water wherever you are in the house. You've certainly had a rich, filled life. Looking back on that extraordinary life, what, what advice would you give 
your younger self? My younger self? Um, it, pop the bubble and expose yourself and surrender to the things that are hard for you, that are difficult to achieve. Surrender to it. Go towards it. Don't, ba- don't, let, don't back off. Don't be afraid. Go to the things that you fear. Because in there is a whole world of, that you never knew existed. Outside you and in, inside you as well. Oh, my God. Oh, I love the metaphor of pop the bubble. Of course, you're talking about the bubble that we try and protect ourselves with, mm-hmm. which is really the whole, the whole nature of my brand, The Hidden Entrepreneur. I, I remained in a bubble for decades, and I, I have finally popped that bubble, and it feels great. It's, it's quite needed. Oh. Yes. My, my teacher, acting teacher, Eric Morris, who I studied a method with for 12 years, probably, he said to me when I started, he said, you know, Lori, you're about this deep. And my forefinger and my thumb are about an inch apart. And he said that to me, you're about this deep and I'll never forget it. So that was where I, that was part of breaking the bubble. So I was a dilettante living in a little bubble all by myself, you know, thinking, la, 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 I'll be an actress and it'll all be wonderful and I can do that. No, you have to, you have to find out about yourself. Yeah, it's so true. You'll certainly appreciate this. Um, right out of high school, I went to Montclair State University. I auditioned and somehow got accepted into their BFA acting program by audition only. But as you know, that's the kind of program where each year you have to re-audition for your spot. And lo and behold, after freshman year, I gave it my all, sat down with the dean, and she said, yeah, we're not going to invite you back. So, of no. course, I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm devastated. I finally realize why she has the box of tissues front and center on the desk for my arrival. And she, with a straight face, looked at me and basically said, see, you can use this as a life experience. And that sort of goes along with what you're saying. I wasn't, I wasn't experienced enough. I wasn't experiencing enough. Right. Well, and also, there is a part of the method, uh, the what if if you haven't experienced, haven't experienced it, what if your mother hadn't wet? No. What if your daughter, something bad happened to her? What would that cause you to feel? You can use that as a, uh, uh, a tool to get mm-hmm. to the, the emotional, you know, obligations of the scene. Absolutely. What mantra do you live by today? A mantra. A mantra. Ah. Uh. I'm here to stir people's pots. Interesting. Mm-hmm. They, they, want, they want to live on the back burner, but I'm here to stir your pot. I want to get it going because then it's going to start to boil and then you're cooking. You're cooking. You're ready to go. That's one, um, one mantra. I love that. Do you believe everything happens for a reason? Oh, I say that, but I guess I do. I guess I do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pretty solid on that. In, in what ways are you spiritual or religious today? Religion. uh, I'm more spiritual. I'm more connected. My God is in the earth. Mother earth is my, my, who I pray to. I pray to mother earth and that's my spirituality is all in involved in them. In the sky and the water and the earth. Yes, those three. Hmm. What do you believe happens when it's all over for us here I, on earth? I have no idea. <laughs> I hope that little spark that I saw when my mother died, uh, that it carries, goes somewhere else and creates another way of being. What did you see? What was that moment like? What happened? Well, she had closed her eyes and a tear, oh, a tear came down her face. And my husband was sitting next to me and he said, grab that tear. And I put it in my finger and he said, put it in your mouth. And I, I drank my mother's tear, last tear. And at, right after that, her eyes went like she was saw, saw, her eyes opened and she saw something and felt something. And then her eyes closed back again. It was that look, that sudden opening of her eyes 
at death, death's door. I think it was a moment of death. I'm not sure. Uh, and then they closed again. But then what did she see? Who did she see? What was that? I want to know. Huh. Yeah. What, what, a, what an incredible. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I love yes. that. Love that. There's so much beauty in that story. Uh huh. And, and, you know, I've seen, I've watched my mother die and I watched my stepfather die. Death is, oh, something. There Do it is, right in front of you. They, they, they go away. And she's, I never heard her voice again. And you have, you have fear around that? No. I, oh, dying? No, no. Uh, sometimes. Some, a lot of the times I feel really good and there are times where I, whew, it'll come at me and I'll go, oh, I won't be here. Oh, my goodness. I'll be here and Jenna and my granddaughters and my husband and dog and everybody will go on if it happened right now. That's looking, looking back on your life, certainly a very, um, from my perspective, a very um, unique, original, exciting ups and downs. Did you, looking back on it, did you love every minute of it? Would you not change a thing? No, no, not change a thing. Not mm -hmm. change a thing. No. Mm -hmm. I'll leave you with this final question, Lori Burton. How would you like to be remembered? As a loving, talented, warm soul. Beautiful. Ooh, so far, so good. I just adore this conversation. I adore you. Thank you for just, just going down memory lane with Pleasure. us. I feel like I could just, yeah, what? Yeah, bless your heart. Let's do it at any other time again. It was just great questions. You were really prepared. Thank you so much. Really good interview. Well, thank well, you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, you're doing this all the time now. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like I could just, I feel like I'm just sitting around having, having tea and uh, yeah. a little snack with you. I love this. Tell us more about your <laughs> Hollywood ventures, your relationships. Why not? In all seriousness, thank you for your time and your openness. This has been a treat. Thank you. Um, if anybody wants to get in touch and uh, see more of you, read more about you, what's the best way? Let's see. They can also, there's on my website, there's a phone number and they can email me at Lori at Lori Burton training dot com. Lori is L-A-U-R-I-E. Absolute beautiful, beautiful person. Again, thank you. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this journey of words as much as I did. You know we're going to do it again real soon. Until we do, go get them.